Welcome to this week's Dowser Blackburn Sunday morning service at nine. If you've joined us before, or this is your first time, you are most welcome. My name is Julian Henderson and I'm the Bishop of Blackburn, one of the team leading these pre-recorded services week by week. Next week we'll be led by Reverend Sarah Gill from Blackburn and it will be multilingual so that we're able to engage with as many people as possible across Lancashire. But today it's all in English and I hope that for this next half hour we will be able to put other things aside and concentrate on giving the Lord our God our full attention as part of our worship today. If you can, that means joining in with the singing and the shared responses, listening to the reading and its message and making the prayers your own to God. For all this to be happening in our homes is a different change from how things normally have been, but it helps us live out and express our discipleship away from the church building and as part of our ordinary daily life. So a moment's quiet before we begin with our first set of responses. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. Though apart, we gather in spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves afresh to the service of God. Our first hymn is the familiar and well-known and much-loved hymn, Ye Servants of God, Your Master Proclaim. throne of grace and offer him our worship so each of us is conscious of our need of forgiveness and the cleansing not so much of the outward body with all that sanitizer that's everywhere these days but the cleansing of the heart 
The Apostle John said in his first letter, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let's now join together in expressing our sorrow for our sin and seeking God's forgiveness this morning. And so we pray. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so may the Almighty and merciful Lord have mercy upon us, grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And to remind us and assure us of that great gift of forgiveness, we'll listen to a song that's uh, been written about the fact that our sins are many, but God's mercy is more. His mercy is more.
the grateful mercy of God, we listen to our Gospel reading for today, which will be read for us by Nick McKee, our Director of Vocations, from Matthew chapter 10, verses 39 to 42. This morning's reading from the New Testament comes from the Gospel of St Matthew, beginning to read at the 39th verse of chapter 10. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open our eyes, O Lord, that we may see wonderful things out of your law. Amen. The last 12 weeks have proved to be a time of serious loss for many. For children, it's been the loss of school. For family and friends, there's been loss of close contact with one another. And there's been the loss of loved ones through the pandemic with bereavement and then the loss of opportunity to be with those family and friends in their last days and hours. For some, there's been the loss of livelihoods, the loss of jobs, the loss of employment, the loss of income. And of course, there's been the loss of Christians meeting together for worship. Who would have thought a while ago that we would have had to postpone ordinations from this weekend into September? All these losses have been forced upon us. They've never been our choice and as such have been painful and unwelcome. To have to give something up, to lose something we value, is always hard. So why on earth did Jesus say what he did at the end of the Gospel reading last Sunday, which I've included again for this Sunday, from Matthew chapter 10 and verse 39? where Jesus said, whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Now this is not a loss forced on us about which we have no choice, but rather one that the Christian chooses to make. You see, God never forces his way into our lives. He waits patiently for us to turn to him and so identify ourselves with him and his cause that we lose our life into his. His agenda becomes our agenda. We become his servants, as we're reminded in the confirmation prayer at the confirmation service. This voluntary choice is the biggest and best decision that anyone ever makes in their lives. But it is a big ask to lose our life for his sake. So that our life becomes not so much about me as it is about him. John the Baptist put this discipleship challenge really well when he said of Jesus, I must decrease, he must increase. This call of Jesus is uncompromising. To be a disciple is to put him first, to love him with all our heart and soul and mind and strength and to be dedicated to furthering his cause, improving his reputation in the world, and caring for his disciples. And that applies to every Christian. It's not just something for the clergy or the paid staff. And I hear many people say, why does Jesus make it so tough, so difficult and so demanding? What's there to gain from making that kind of sacrifice? Well, Jesus in today's Gospel reading goes on to explain what he means with a number of promises. Look at it carefully. He says if we receive his apostles, in other words, their teaching, then in effect we're receiving him 
and his father. If we receive his prophets and their message, he says we shall be rewarded. If we receive those who model and live a godly life, we shall also be rewarded. And if we give a cup of cold water to one of his disciples, then we shall be rewarded. Jesus outlines extraordinary blessings for those who lose their life for his sake. There's the joy and the peace that comes from knowing we're doing his will. In a sense, that's reward enough. But when we add in all the blessings of life in all its fullness, of seeing others come to faith, of prayers being answered, of promises that God has made holding true, and then add in the sure hope of life beyond death, whatever we may think we have lost will fade into the distance by comparison with what he has given. It was Jim Elliot, that missionary to the Aka Indians in South America, who was martyred for his faith, who put it like this, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Well, the promise still stands. Whoever loses their life for his sake will find it. He invites us all to make him Lord and Master. I remember being told years ago that it was not sufficient to invite Jesus into the hallway of our lives as a kind of guest. That was a bit of an insult. We're to invite him to be the host, giving him the keys to all the rooms and allowing him to be the one in charge. The standards by which we live our lives are to be his. What we do with our money, what our priorities are to be governed by him. So it's a call for us to surrender all that we have to him. And it's put in that well-known and much-loved hymn, All for Jesus, all for Jesus, this our song shall ever be, for we have no hope nor saviour if we have not hope in thee. Some of us listening today may have been half-hearted as disciples, never fully surrendering every aspect of our lives to him. We've kept some of the rooms locked and kept him out, saying, well, I keep that to myself. In that area of my life, I choose to do as I like. Today is a day for us to give him the keys of all the rooms. Some listen to this may have been going to church for years but never realised that this was what it was all about. Today could be the day when all that gets put right and you place your life in his hands. Some listening to this may not have attended a service in church for many years, perhaps never at all, but have chosen to eavesdrop on this service today. And to your surprise, you find that Jesus is calling you to come and follow him. What you have to do is to say you realise three things, that keeping your distance from Jesus has been wrong, especially as that has been a lot more than two metres for many of us. Secondly, that he voluntarily gave and lost his life so that we could be forgiven. And that he waits for us to ask him to be our Saviour and Lord and to receive his Spirit. It's all very profound and yet wonderfully simple in order for us to find our life by giving it away. Maybe there's a response that you need to make to him today. If you do, well, tell another Christian what you have done. And I'm sure you will not regret the decision because making him Lord of all is how God meant it to be. I'm sure you know the old adage, if he is not Lord of all, well, he is not Lord at all. Let me finish with two other verses from that hymn I quoted a moment ago. All for Jesus, thou hast loved us. All for Jesus, thou hast died. All for Jesus, thou art with us. All for Jesus, glorified. All for Jesus, all for Jesus, this the church's song shall be, till at last the flock is gathered, one in love and one in thee. Amen. And now Heather, my wife, will lead us in our intercessions for this morning. 
As we come and talk directly to our awesome God in prayer, let's remember as Psalm 95 says, and as this small plastic globe illustrates, the sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. So come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, for he is our maker. Father God, in these days when we've been made so aware of the transience of life, we thank you that because of Jesus, it is possible to live with hope. We pray for those for whom hope is scarce, for those across the globe suffering from the pandemic through illness, through lack of earnings, through lack of food and through loss of loved ones. Our hearts are heavy when we see and know the suffering of millions. We confess that too often we've been so taken up with finding our own lives that we failed to help others to find life. We've too often lived selfishly, creating security for ourselves while denying hope to others. Father, forgive us. Father God, we praise you for the transformation that knowing you brings to people's lives. We praise you that you long to bring love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness and self-control into lives that are without hope. We pray for the many people who give up their own security to share this hope with others. For those who go to difficult places in our own country as well as those who serve you in challenging and even dangerous places around the world. For those who stand against injustice and then find themselves victims of injustice. For those who refuse to keep quiet when they see abuse of power. And for those who keep loving even when that love is spurned. We praise you for the courage of those who are prepared to model their lives on the life of Jesus, who knew what it was to lose his life so that others can live. Father God, we pray for the many individuals that we know around the world. We thank you for diocesan friends in the Free State in South Africa and in Braunschweig in Germany. For the many in this diocese who have relatives and friends across the globe, so as we look at this small model of God's world, I suggest that we take a quiet moment to pray for people we know in other countries. As Peter says at the end of his book, may they grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And may they, like us, know what it is to find life in all its fullness. In the name of Jesus, who gave his life so that we might live. Amen. What have I lost for following Christ? I guess I've had to, like a lot of people, give up some dreams and ambitions of my own to do with money and power to, uh, to follow Christ's call. Also lost some street cred, some respect from some colleagues and friends over the years. But what have I gained? I've gained, um, first of all, a, a church family across the world, brothers and sisters, uh, mothers and fathers in Christ, in other countries, every part of this country, everywhere I go, it's membership of, of God's family. And that's, that's really precious and really important to me and a great gain. But also um, I've gained a quiet conscience and, um, and some peace of mind, um, not so worried about things, not so anxious about things, because I can trust God, even in difficult times. And that's, that's a great game. I'm no football fan, but the song, You'll Never Walk Alone, sums up for me the reward of following Christ. Several years ago, I lost many friends and family, one after the other. And walking through that grief felt a lot easier with Jesus by my side. 
someone who was a source of compassion and peace and care when my own reserves were running dry. Here was somebody walking with me who knew that death did not have the last word. And since then, it has sometimes felt like following Christ has been like trying to climb a mountain in the snow, trying to find fading footprints and listen for his voice ahead of me. But the comfort has always come in knowing that Christ was there in that tough journey and that I was not making it alone. But following Christ has also brought with it a whole church family. And there's a real blessing in being welcomed into a whole body of people across the world and across the ages. Not one of us is perfect, but we're all trying to see the world, trying to see each other as God sees, and trying to live our lives accordingly. We have the assurance that Christ is walking with us through the storms and the golden skies. The rewards or blessings of following Jesus. Well, you know, superficially we'd say that, um, you know, life has been better and life has been great. And I've been afforded opportunities that I don't believe I would have been afforded otherwise. But the reality of it is that I've seen things and I've learned things that I would have otherwise not learned about people and more importantly about myself. I believe that the biggest reward I've gotten from following Jesus is a, se a sense of contentment with who I am and what I've achieved and what else is in store for me in the future. In a nutshell, I guess that's pretty much the blessings that I've received from following Jesus. Our final hymn is one that encourages us as the church, the people of God, to rise and be on with the work that he has given us to do. O oh, church, arise. O oh, church, arise and put your armour on. Hear the call of Christ our captain. strong in the strength that God has given with shield of faith and belt of truth we'll stand against the devil's light an army bold whose battle cry is love reaching out to those in darkness our call to war, to love the captive soul, but to rage against the captor, and with the sword that makes the wounded whole, we will fight with faith and valor. Till the day Every eye and heart will see
spirit come, put strength in every stride, give grace for every hurdle that we may run with faith to win the prize of a servant good and fair. in that place where God is able to give to us, to pour upon us, to fill us with his blessing. And so may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you those you love, those for whom you pray, this day and forevermore. Amen. Well, thank you for more than just watching and listening. I hope you have a day that continues or perhaps starts with losing your life for his sake and so finding it and reaping the rewards, the many rewards that he promises.